It gives me great pleasure to speak to you from this beautiful, internationally renowned town, St Gotlen. Plaid Cymru members have come together in between two events of such historic magnitude that it might be difficult to appreciate their long-term significance. Just a few weeks ago, our friends in Scotland conducted the greatest democratic mobilisation in the history of these islands. And in just a few short months, people will go to the polling stations in the first proper multi-party election. The old two-party Westminster system is coming to an end. Its demise has been accelerated with the remarkable Yes campaign in Scotland. A new state may not have been born on September the 18th, but a new democracy has been created and its march is irreversible. It was a great experience to visit Scotland during the build-up to the referendum. And today, I want to pay tribute to Scotland's outgoing First Minister, Alex Salmond. <laughs> Alex, you inspired a new generation. You gave voice to the silent. You led a movement with dignity and you made a nation believe in itself again. From all of us in the Party of Wales, thank you, Alex, and very best wishes to you for your future. And to appreciate that remarkable record, we only have to compare the achievements of one SNP First Minister in Scotland with that of three Labour First Ministers in Wales. Scotland is heard because its government has an uncompromising Scottish voice shouting loud for Scotland, and Wales deserves nothing less. Plaid Cymru and the SNP have shared a special bond for decades and I'm looking forward to that bond flourishing even further under the SNP's new leader, Nicola Sturgeon. The work we will be undertaking on behalf of our two countries will be crucial in the coming months and beyond. Before the election in 2010, few agreed with us that a hung parliament was likely. Few took that eventuality seriously. But the outcome, a cruel and damaging coalition, has been very serious indeed. A ruinous government with no mandate from the people of Wales. There is every chance of a hung parliament again after the next election. And votes here in Wales and in Scotland could decide who holds the balance of power. If there is no overall majority, the voice of Wales through the party of Wales will play a key role. People face a choice in May next year between more of the same with even more power concentrated in the hands of the Westminster elite or the parties of Wales and Scotland who want power held in the hands of the people. Plaid Cymru understands that many people are in despair at the thought of the status quo continuing. We share the distrust and anger at a system and at an establishment which is broken and which has let Wales down time after time after time. And I say this to people watching at home. We understand why those who make decisions in your name seem distant and remote from our everyday lives. That is why Plaid Cymru has always fought for decisions to be made closer to home. We want to bring government home to the people. Scotland, through its strength and determination, will make this a reality. We can do so too. 
The next election cannot be allowed to be a false choice between four shades of grey in the televised leaders' debates. We will not allow a lockout of the alternative voices, those of us who have something different to offer to the stale Westminster establishment. It is a question of basic democracy. As things stand, who will arti articulate the alternative position on questions like social justice, war, climate change, the welfare state? Who will put the alternative position on migration in the proposed television debates? Who will tell the truth that here in Wales, our public services, our NHS and parts of our service industry would collapse without the contribution of workers from overseas? Who will talk about Wales? This is a chance for people to hear that there is an alternative to the UK party's race to the bottom on health, on education and jobs. As things stand, the reality on the television will be distorted. The truth will not be televised. And that is why we should be there. The case for Wales deserves to be heard. Plaid Cymru will provide both the challenge and the alternative. Our alternative is one based on building on people's hopes, not playing to their fears. It is based on listening and hearing and acting on people's concerns about their jobs, their bills, their future. We know that Wales has got what it takes to be successful. We've done it before. We can get back to where we once were in our proud past and be leaders again. An industrious nation, busy with its hands, creative with its brains. We want to free Welsh industry and enterprise to thrive and play their part in getting Wales working again. Our job creation plans include taking 70,000 firms out of business rates altogether so that they can take on more staff. And we'll create 50,000 new local jobs by giving more of our public contracts to Welsh businesses. We want to create the conditions for a thriving economy to build the fair and prosperous society we know we can be. And in return, the Party of Wales believes that our workers should be given a decent day's pay for an honest day's work. It is unacceptable that 25% of workers in Wales are paid less than £7.65 an hour. If you work a 40-hour week, you should earn enough to live on. That is why, in this election, Plaid Cymru is committed to getting a living wage by 2020, a pay rise for 250,000 Welsh employees. It is also unacceptable that unscrupulous employers can exploit migrant workers by undercutting local wages. Plaid Cymru is committed to addressing the legal loopholes which allow this situation to go unchecked and unchallenged. And we've already introduced legislation in Westminster to ensure that the terms and conditions do not put the local workforce at a disadvantage in any way. We want Wales to be a beacon of economic fairness, a high value, high quality investment location where good conditions make good business sense. <laughs> Plaid Cymru's priority is to build a sustainable and prosperous economic future for our country. And it's now time for the British state to deliver financial fairness too. It's time for a democratic economy. 
Our doctrine for a democratic economy accountable to people and communities is rooted in our aim of rebalancing power and wealth in these islands. It would involve legislation on a UK level to place a legal duty on the government for policy to be geared towards levelling up wealth per head, spreading prosperity rather than concentrating it. A democratic economy would mean investment is targeted to areas and sectors most in need of growth. A democratic economy that moves us away from dependence on financial services and back to industry, creating and innovating to trade and export. A democratic economy that ensures investment in infrastructure isn't sucked into the London city-state black hole but connects communities and businesses everywhere. Our democratic economy, built on three firm pillars, geographic fairness, fairness in conditions for workers, and fairness in the environment that we create for indigenous business to flourish. No one will be left behind or excluded from Plaid Cymru's democratic economy. The business as usual model of politics and economics in the UK cannot continue. Westminster is broken. Austerity has failed Wales. It has failed almost all parts of the UK. All this pain and worry has been caused to people unnecessarily. Remember, we were told austerity was essential in order to balance the books at the end of this parliament. But the books are still not balanced. The UK's debt is over 1.4 trillion pounds and rising every day. It's not being paid off. It's not coming down. And now they, the three Westminster parties, and they have become a collective they, tell us that the answer to failed austerity is even more austerity. After years of redundancies, years of pay cuts, the withdrawal of public services, forcing those who are severely ill or unfit for work through disability to jump through hoops just to survive, closure or the selling off of our community assets, our nursery provision, day centres, libraries, art centres, for what? The UK is one of the most unequal states. Westminster Austerities policies are responsible for 70,000 people going to a Welsh food bank last year. It is one of the world's wealthiest states. Labour promised to stand up for Wales. Where have they been? It's worth noting that Labour are also fully paid up members of the Austerity Brigade. The Shadow Chancellor has made it clear that Tory cuts will become Labour cuts if they win the next election. We prioritise Wales so that we can achieve equality. They prioritise Westminster, which entrenches our inequality. They all do. Well, enough is enough. Austerity has failed, and a bailout is needed now, not for bankers, but for people. Our people deserve better than this. The broken Westminster system is part of the problem, as is Labour's unbroken rule in Wales. The Party of Wales will build this country on a different set of values. We will build an economy on a different set of priorities. We too want to eliminate the deficit. We don't want future generations inheriting the mistakes of the past, financially or socially. Our solution is to invest our way out of debt. Plaid Cymru's vision is centred around people and communities, a vision based on rebalancing power and wealth in these islands, an economy which here in Wales will end our dependence. Within a generation, Plaid Cymru wants to create a Wales that is no longer tagged as one of the poorest regions of Europe. We want to end 
our dependence on European funds. We will create a Wales where no one is left behind, where our people receive the health care they need when they need it, and where every child is given the opportunity to thrive. Some may believe dependence and poverty are inevitable for Wales. We don't accept that. For Plaid Cymru, another Wales is possible. And that is why we say that our road to prosperity must begin with Wales being treated equally. In a moment of political expediency, hours before the Scottish referendum, the three Westminster leaders jointly announced that they will not introduce a new funding formula for Wales based on the needs of our nation. Did you see the frantic backtracking by the branches of their parties in Wales? Another policy U-turn at the Lib Dems conference and Labour? Well, when that vow was given to Scotland, the First Minister of Wales should have been standing up for Wales. Instead, our First Minister was standing shoulder to shoulder with a Tory Prime Minister and his deputy pledging that the unfairness in the way that Wales is funded would be locked in and locked down. And we have now just learnt that he didn't just back that vow, he gave it his full blessing. He gave it his full blessing and he didn't bother demanding a vow for Wales. For his own country, the only thing our First Minister fought for on behalf of Wales during that referendum was to bring weapons of mass destruction to Welsh waters. And it went down like a lead trident missile, even in his home party. <laughs> they made that vow knowing and accepting that Wales loses out financially a lot. Even though need here is greater, that was their choice. But it's our duty in Plaid Cymru to fight for the best possible deal for Wales. If they won't change the formula to base our funding on relative need, let's instead ensure that we are placed on an equal footing to Scotland. Picture this. If every man, woman and child in Wales received the same funding per head as the people of Scotland, our schools and hospitals and local services would get an extra £1.2 billion every year. Why should we be treated any differently? We already have a third-rate devolution settlement. Why should we settle for a second-rate financial arrangement? It makes no sense. And after their pledge to stand up for Wales, why would Labour accept a situation whereby Wales was treated less favourably than the Scots? For over, us, over a century, our nation was the industrial powerhouse of these islands. A small few benefited greatly from the natural resources that so many spent their lives digging out of the ground. And now it's time for our historic contribution to be recognised. We've trailed behind for far too long. We must now ensure that Wales gets equality, parity for our people. That's the level, level playing field we want. And it's that equality, it's that opportunity that will allow our nation to begin to stand on its own two feet. And if we achieve that level playing field for Wales, then we can support England to determine its own future too. By breaking the inequality in the way that our nations are funded, then we too can support English votes for English laws. It's common sense. Of course Welsh MPs shouldn't be interfering in the way the English want to run their NHS or schools or their councils, just as English ministers shouldn't be interfering in the decisions made in Wales.
if Welsh funding wasn't aligned to those policy decisions taken for England, then we in Wales, along with our neighbours and friends across the border, could simply get on with the job, rebalancing power and wealth. That is our goal. That is our fight for Wales over the coming months. And Plaid Cymru will seek a mandate at this election to make that happen, levelling up the playing field in the forthcoming election. Just imagine the difference that could be made to your life and those around you. Just imagine the difference it could make to your community. By cutting the ties between decisions made in England and the cash Wales gets, we can invest in our NHS and protect its funding from Westminster privatisation and its reputation from Daily Mail headlines. We take no comfort from seeing Labour's poor handling of our health services splashed across the Tory press. It demoralises staff, it scares patients. And the irony of it, on the one hand, we see the Tories pointing the finger whilst cutting the cloth. On the other, we see Labour passing the buck rather than stepping up. All the while, waiting lists grow, our ambulance service struggles, and our A and E departments are at breaking point. Patients don't want politicians playing politics with their health. They want solutions. And Plaid Cymru has already committed to in investing in the recruitment of a thousand doctors across Wales. We want to integrate health and social care to guarantee a seamless transition for patients between the two. We want our patients to have the benefits of health innovation in telemedicine and we will rise to the challenge of mental ill health in our society. We want to see the ambulances arriving on time in all parts of Wales. The Party of Wales will modernise and improve our NHS to address the heart of the problem rather than tinker around the edges. Haven't we had enough of tinkering from tired labour? Haven't we had enough of light-touch approach from a lightweight government? Wales wants and Wales needs leadership. Our health professionals, our patients, our educators and our parents deserve a government that shows strong leadership. A lot has been said recently about oaths. I have a message for the teachers of Wales. Plaid Cymru will value the unwritten covenant you've made by choosing your career as a teacher. You didn't choose this profession to undertake hours of form filling and box ticking to satisfy the bureaucrats in the Welsh Ministry of Education. You chose your profession because you believe that you could make a difference to the lives of our children. It's right that parents, pupils, and even politicians expect good outcomes. And under the Plaid Cymru government, you will be judged on outcomes and outcomes alone. We will give you the time, the resources, the trust, and the support you need to teach pupils to reach the very best of their ability. Over the next few months, my front bench team will talk to teachers across the length and breadth of our nation to listen to your views about how we can free up your precious time to improve standards and outcomes for our pupils. No more initiatives, no more gimmicks, no more bullying from government. Collaboration, cooperation, shared goals will be the hallmark of Plaid Cymru's approach to giving our children the best start in life. We will make sure that the next generation has it better than the last in skills, in prospects, and in quality of life. Nessa rydyn ni'n wynebu etholiad ledled y Deyrnas Unedig lle bydd Llais Cymru i glywed yn glir 
a chas bod cefnogaeth i Blaid Cymru yn codi. Mae aelodau seneddol Blaid Cymru yn brwydro dros ein gwlad a dros ei cymunedau. Dwi eisiau dweud diolch yn fawr iawn i chi, tîm Cymru yn Llundain, Elfyn Llwyd, Jonathan Edwards a Howell Williams. Dyma gynhadledd llawn olaf Elfyn Llwyd fel aelod seneddol. Mae e'n uchel ei barch ar draws y bleidiau, ac mae wedi gwneud gormod i restru popeth. O gyn filwyr i bobl sy'n cael ei stelcio, dros y blynyddoedd mae Elfyn Llwyd wedi bod yna i rai oedd angen cefnogaeth. Elfyn, a ran pawb rydych chi wedi helpu i wella a'i bywydau, ac a ran plaid Cymru, diolch yn fawr iawn am bopeth. Pobl yn gofyn i ni, pa wahaniaeth mae aelod seneddol Plaid Cymru yn gallu gwneud go iawn. Mae record Elfyn gyda record Jonathan Edwards a Howell Williams yn dangos llwyddiant go iawn sydd wedi cyffwrdd bywydau pobl ym mhob ran o Gymru ac yn bellach. Yn cyflwyno deddfau ar stelcio a cryf chai hawliau rai sydd sy'n dioddau yn gwneud yr achos dros swm tecach o arian ar gyfer clydiant yng Nghymru, yn mynnu bargen well o ran tanwydd i bobl cefn gwlad a prisiau gwell i ffermwyr, yn brwydro dros preith gorau dwyaethog a hawliau i siaradwyr Cymraeg yn y system gyfreithiol, ac yn arwyn y brwydr yn erbyn treth y llofftydd, contractau, dimoriau a dros amodau gwaith tecach. Mae nhw'n gweithio'n galed i ennill y pwerau mae Cymru angen i llwyddo ac mae nhw'n galw am ragor. Ar blis mona, yni, darlledu a'r ein holl adnoddau naturiol, mae nhw'n wedi bod yn gwneud yr achos dros rhoi dyfodol Cymru yn, yn nwylo pobl Cymru. A bydd tîm mwy ar ôl mis mae nesaf, yn rhoi plaid Cymru mewn safle cryf, er mwyn rhoi Cymru ar yr un lefel ar Alban. A key part of plaid Cymru's work in Westminster is international. The rise of ISIL is causing terror in an already terrorised region. The lessons of Bush and Blair's military interventions there should warn us that we cannot bomb our way to a peaceful outcome. Plaid Cymru supports and will continue to support international humanitarian intervention in the Middle East. But under no circumstances will Plaid Cymru MPs in this parliament or the next commit to a war where there is no official international mandate where there is no clear operational or exit strategy, where there is no indication of the impact on the lives of either troops or civilians, where there is no clear indication as to how the peace will be won. It is a political conflict and it requires a long-term political solution, a solution that involves nations, governments and civic society in the region to come together to work for a just peace. And the current conflict, which has been exacerbated by Western policy, must be confronted with diplomatic means facilitated by the international community, an international effort. And cooperation must be sought in the other major global crises that we face today. The twin curses of conflict and climate change are the greatest causes 
of the mass movement of people, of immigration, and of the creation of refugees. If we really want to sort out the challenges associated with global mass migration, we have to tackle the root causes. The Party of Wales has always held a strong internationalist outlook. We want Wales to contribute and work with others to end poverty, to limit climate change, and to resolve conflict. And all of these can only be achieved through global cooperation. It is unacceptable for the Westminster government to backtrack on the Climate Change Act, to continue to allocate vast sums for bombs, weapons, and troops abroad when they say there isn't enough money to fund hospitals, schools, or to help people make ends meet. But it will. It will, it will carry on. All of it will carry on, unless our people do something different, unless our people do the unexpected. If Wales always does what everyone expects Wales to do and what Wales has always done, then we cannot expect the outcomes to be any different. People here in Wales must do the unexpected now. Let's learn from what the people have done in Scotland. Don't take my word for it. Only a few weeks ago, a leader of another party reflected on Scotland and she said, I quote, don't be surprised if the Welsh conclude that it is only by voting nationalist that things will change. Well, I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> Things will only change in Wales when Plaid Cymru has the full might of Wales behind us. If people carry on doing the expected, they can continue to expect what they've always had, poor and arrogant political decisions which are not made in the interest of Wales. Decisions like that on the M4. I led my team out of budget negotiations with the Welsh Government because we could not endorse a decision to sacrifice an all Wales approach to investment. We could not pursue a project which carries such a high cost for the public purse and the environment with so little gain. Let me repeat today. Squandering a billion pounds of borrowed money tying the government's hands for at least a decade on a new motorway in one corner of our country is unacceptable. All of Wales outside the M4 corridor should feel the benefit of our government finally being able to invest in our nation's infrastructure. Our valleys, the west, the north, our rural towns and our urban centres are all feeling neglected since the Welsh Government abandoned its commitment to One Wales in 2011. <laughs> the Labour Government should reverse its decision to blow our nation's budget on a motorway that few people want. They should invest instead in our national infrastructure, countrywide, but they won't. And that highlights another difference between us. They say it, we mean it. Standing up for Wales, they say it, we mean it. Oppose Tory cuts, they say it, we mean it. Redistribute wealth, they say it, we mean it. More powers for Wales, they say it, we mean it. Labour says it, Plaid Cymru means it. And we will bring our government home so we have the tools to deliver social justice and prosperity for our communities. For me, it's no secret, I don't see more devolution as the end of the journey for Wales. I want to see us emerge as an independent country. 
I want Wales to join the international community and build a future that is just, prosperous and free. I want for my country what others take for granted as normal. And I will always, always maintain that the way we get the best out of each other and the best for each other is when we have our own destiny in our own hands. I want to see Wales at its best, but it's not going to happen overnight, and ultimately that choice will be yours. The journey of our nation will always be in the hands of the people in Wales. But it will happen, I believe, in years, not decades. In the meantime, allow us the opportunity to show that Plaid Cymru has got what it takes to transform Wales. Let's all unite behind the immediate aim of building a new politics which works for Wales. Let's build a country that is strong enough, prosperous enough and fair enough to succeed for all. Every year in this town, Llangollen, people from all corners of the earth congregate and take part in the greatest cultural exchange on earth. Today, in this hall, People who believe another Wales is possible have congregated. And over the coming weeks, we all have a part to play in engaging the communities of this country to begin the biggest democratic exchange Wales has ever seen. Plaid Cymru will keep working for Wales. And by working together, we, the people of Wales, will reclaim the course of our nation. Dear Alfred